Welcome to Global Pillar Ministry, a platform that exists to bring believers back to their Bibles and prepare them to become efficient in the kingdom of God. Join me as I welcome your host, Dr. Levin Damisa. Praise the Lord. Give God praise, giving God thanks for his mercies tonight. We thank God for the season. Merry Christmas to all. And the season is here and the season is very unique. That's why there's something about Christmas. The joy of Christmas affects the old creature. They know that something happened. God is faithful. We thank God for tonight. Praise God. Welcome again to Global Pillar Ministry teaching series. We are looking at family dynamics, which God helped us to start about three weeks ago. And so tonight will be the fourth episode in the series. We are trusting God to direct us, we are trusting God to cause us to see more light as we fight for our families in every aspect of it. Amen. Father, we want to thank you tonight. We want to bless you for what you've done in our families, in our home. You've helped us to embrace our differences. We are learning to resolve issues. You are helping us, oh God, to have effective communication in our family system. We thank you for what you will do tonight as we rise for our family. Blessed be your name, O God, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We start tonight again by looking at our destiny confession. It's something we introduce so that uh, to shape in our direction. We're trusting God. So you say after me, Arise daily for my God. Arise daily for my family. Arise daily for myself. Arise daily for my God. Arise daily for my family. Arise daily for myself. Amen. The order is not a mistake or it's not coincidence. God first, your family, then yourself. You can't say, but myself come before my family. Yes. We are saying that you must attend to yourself, your family, and then God is his anchor. God is the center. God is the focus of everything in life. The beginning, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. There's nothing a man can achieve. No man can go far in life without God in his beginning, in the process, and in the product. So we need to understand that. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to give God thanks tonight for the season we found ourselves. I want to thank God for his mercy. A few days from now is Christmas. And we are looking at family series, and they please the Lord to guide us to look at a wonderful family. You know, I was telling somebody tonight of how excited I am in tonight's episode, and the person said, well, little is actually known about the marriage of Joseph and Mary. Uh, because we are in the season of Christmas and we are taking family series, we, 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 we want to take, make it a two-in-one while celebrating Christmas. We want to look at the marriage of Joseph to Mary. And what lessons can we derive from it as children of God in the New Testament? And so the topic of tonight's episode is rising for your family. Amen. Rising for your family. Or if I may personalize, personalize it, rising for my family. Now, in every generation, God looks for men to rise for their family. As God looks for men to rise for nations, as God looks for men to rise for countries, to rise for ethnic group, as God raised leaders across the centuries down the ages for a particular cause, there's something about God that God also wants to raise to he, he, he want to raise men for families. And it will be a very great privilege if God chooses you or if you rise to the occasion for the family to stand in the gap. He said, I look for a man to stand in the gap and I found none. God is looking for men to stand in the gap. And so also in the family system, in the family institution, God wants men to rise for their families. Why? The days are evil. We are in a very precarious situation. The family institution is under severe attack. No, there's no time in the history of creation that the family institution 
has been attacked than the days we found ourselves. The core values of family have been threatened. The core values institution, what gives society the identity, which is a family system, is under attack. Poverty has become a weapon to undermine family values. Poverty has become a tool to undermine or to negate the purpose of God for your family. And that is why I challenge you tonight hearing me as a man, as a woman, that God wants you to rise for your family. And if you are not married, begin to take a position, begin to take a pledge. The Bible says even before the children of Israel were born, God spoke concerning Abraham. He said, there's nothing I'm going to do that I'm going to hide it from my friend Abraham because I know he's going to command his children after me. That means even if you are a single person, listen to this marriage, take a position that, listen to this message, Take a position so that God can say, I'm going to bless this man because I know he's going to command his family after me. So take a position to rise for your family. Hallelujah to the glory of God. The family is a trust. The family is both spiritual and physical. So in some marriages, when you look at your marriage as mere physical entity, you are going to miss it. When you look at your family as oddly spiritual, you are going to miss it. Marriage is both spiritual and physical. That is why Apostle Paul could write concerning the church as a mystery likening it to marriage. Because he said, I speak of a mystery about God, about Christ and the church, relating it to the husband and the wife. There's a physical dimension of marriage and there's a spiritual dimension of marriage. Hallelujah. For you to assess the full blessing in marriage, one must rise to the sacrifice, to the demand, to the disposition and the dispensation. No two marriages are the same. No two families are the same. So the lesson we are teaching tonight is for us to apply it in our situation so that we can be that man, that woman, that family that God ordained your life and my life to be. Hallelujah to the glory of God. We're going to be taking our passage from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. It's a little long read, but it's very important to lay the basis of our teaching tonight. He said, now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost as the father of Jesus. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife, unto thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with the child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm excited. The more I read the scripture, the more I study the scripture, I see the marriage of Mary and Joseph as a ground for us to understand what it is to rise for your family, what it is to rise for your lineage, what it is to rise for your wife, what it is to rise for your children, what it is to rise to fulfill the purpose of God for your family. Hallelujah. The Bible says Mary was espoused. Now let me take you back a little to the Israelite culture, to the Jewish culture, 
when once a girl is born and is growing, a man she is betrothed to a man, and the law of betrothal in the Jewish custom is such that it is as good as marriage already uh, already perfected. It the betrothal is a stage before the actual marriage. Legally, that woman becomes your spouse. You cannot put her away unless you divorce her legally in the Old Testament. So Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Mary was a spouse as a virgin to Joseph. And that is why when the instruction came that everybody should go to their place for census under Emperor, I mean under Augustus, the Bible said Joseph has to carry Mary. You know why? Because Mary was already in code is his legal assets. Is legal asset because one, she was betrothed to Joseph. Now, may I, support, may I say to you tonight that there were other virgins in Israel who were equally betrothed to their as their custom demand. But I see the role played by Joseph as being a reason why God chose Mary. Because Joseph was so supportive of Mary that Mary had it easier compared to if Joseph was a nasty husband. I want to throw it out tonight. How many of our men support their women to fulfill the purpose and the mandate of God? Are you a man? Are you a, are you a man listening to us tonight? Are you a husband? To what extent do you support your wife in carrying out the activity that God has given her? It's very crucial. Rising for your family. Now, we see here that Joseph was solidly behind Mary. And that is why when we now look at, at, at the life, at the marriage of Mary and Joseph, we can boldly say that God could trust Joseph for this unique assignment. He had astounding qualities that made him the point man for his family. Hallelujah. Now, what are those things that make Joseph a point man for his family? There's the cross of tonight's teaching. One, the Bible says Joseph was a righteous man. He was full of integrity. The King James says Joseph was a just man. It means a just man means he's a man that respects the laws of God and also has set his responsibility as a man. Every man out there tonight for you to rise for your family, you must learn to take responsibility. A man that does not take responsibility cannot be said to rise for his family. Secondly, you find out that when the angel told Joseph, Joseph was, when Joseph got the information that Mary was pregnant, the Bible says, as a deep thinker, as a man of understanding, as a man of wisdom, he began to think of what to do. I'm going to put Mary away. Mary has embarrassed me. Who did Mary sleep with? Because the Bible says, Joseph had not yet known Mary. Because they have not concluded their marriage right. So Joseph had every right to be angry. But the Bible made it clear to us that in verse 19, it says, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. I see a man in Joseph who was discreet. I see a man who was disciplined and not brash in his activities. I see an husband who was a big picture thinker. I see in Joseph a man that look at the broader picture of things before acting. Now the Bible says Joseph had a right to be angry. Joseph had a right to, to put her away privately because by the Jewish custom, when a woman commit adultery or fornication before marriage, she should be stoned to death. But despite that, I see Joseph as a man who was circumspect because of the love he had for Mary. He didn't want to announce it publicly. He want to do it with discretion. How many men out there treat issues of their marriage with discretion? How many of us address our wife's weaknesses with discretion? Many people are so quick to ridicule their wife in public. And that has been a cause of many marital conflicts. 
By the grace of God, we are involved in marital counseling, marital conflict resolution. Many a time you see that the wife is embarrassed by her husband in the public. The, the same way the husband could be embarrassed by the wife in the public. Sharp rebuke, open rebuke. These are the things that are, cause, that are causing heavy crisis in homes. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And so the Bible says, Joseph didn't want to follow that path. Rather, he wanted to meditate on it and before acting. Many of us act impulsively. Many homes have been destroyed out of impulse. Many homes have been destroyed because somebody didn't get to understand the purpose of God. He talked rashly, he spoke rashly, and love and relationship is destroyed. But God is saying tonight, rise for your family. Be a deep thinker. Do not take decision rashly. Many people have pronounced, have made utterances that have ended their marriages or said things that have caused damage, mental damage, psychological damage because they were brash. Not a man like Joseph. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, we see, the Bible says, why he thought on these things? Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Joseph had a relationship with God. Joseph knew how God speaks to him. God speaks to different people in different ways. Some vision, some trance, some dream. In the case of Joseph, God chose to speak to him through dream. And the Bible says something that Joseph was, and the angel appeared, and God spoke to him. It says, Joseph, son of David, as the, God is saying, David, Joseph, I recognize your royal lineage. I recognize you have a right to put Mary away. I recognize you as a royal man, as a man of honor, you know what to do. However, that is not what you are going to do. Rather, he said, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to the glory of God. The Bible says here, Joseph was not pretending. We are not saying we should pretend when we are hot. No. In the case of Joseph, he rose to each occasion. The Bible says there was no need for him to pretend. He was hurt by the news of Mary pregnancy, but not in despair. And then he looked beyond his heart, not adopting denial. Some of us, again, some men, you deny things. No, no, no. We are not saying we should deny when things are going wrong. But we are saying rise to the occasion. Think deeply before you act. In that process, the Spirit of God will always guide you on what to do. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says he forgave long ahead, even before. And so he didn't need to, Mary didn't need to come condescending and begging. Why? Because God stepped in. How many of us men allow God to step in when there are marital issues? How many men spend time in the place of prayer, in the presence of God, to hear what the Lord wants to say, to hear what the Lord wants to do, to hear what direction God wants his children to take in a marriage. I say in the opening remark that marriage is a trust. Family is a trust. God wants families united. The what you are seeing in social media, where families are being separated, divorce is increasing at slightest provocation, at slightest offense, is alien to the spirit move of God. Is alien to the purpose of God. Is is it pain God when families are scattered? Is a pain to God when homes are strained, when children are raised up in by different parents because of irreconcilable differences. Upon time, no difference is irreconcilable. It's just the flesh, the old man, that Adamic nature that always says, "I will not take this." It's what makes a lot of homes to run aground. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the Bible says, Joseph stood by Mary. And then, Jesus was born. Now you will see again that it's so important, the life of Joseph is so interesting to me, that Joseph was not only a punt man at the beginning of their marriage, he stood there during the time of crisis. Some men are so nice during courtship stage. Once they marry their wife, everything dies down. That is not the home that God wants you to have. That is not what God wants you to do. The Bible says, 
God, be, after the encounter, it's so interesting that after the encounter of Mary, of Joseph with the angel, after the encounter of Mary with the angel, we never heard angel death with Mary anymore. The last speaks volume. When the wise men visited Herod and announced the birth of the king, and when they saw the star from the east, when the angel was to announce the, 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 the escape plan, the angel didn't go to Mary. He spoke to Joseph. Joseph became, Joseph took the spiritual leadership of that home. When Herod and those who were after Jesus died, the Bible said the angel came to Joseph again and said, move, those who are after him are dead. Why is that so? Because Joseph rose to the occasion to become the spiritual head of his family. Many homes are scattering today because the place of spiritual headship is there. Many homes are scattering today because the place of spiritual leadership is gone. Men have lost their voice in the place of prayer and so their voice can no longer be heard in their home. I speak to you tonight. If you are a man listening to me, you've lost your voice in the place of the spirit over your family. God no longer deals with you. I say, let every mountain be rolled away in the name of Jesus. I say to you tonight, pick up, the, pick up your rags and move again. Go back to the cross of Calvary. Go back in the place of prayer. Go back and experience the power of resurrection and get your spiritual man to back. Every man is destined to be a prophet over his family. Joseph rose to that picture. He began to, he began the point man that God was dealing with. Read the scripture. Up to the point we stop hearing of Joseph, he was the man that God was dealing with. The Lord will open our eyes for deeper understanding in the name of Jesus. The Bible says something here in, in Matthew chapter 2. When those wise men came, the angel came and said, Joseph, run. Joseph, run. Joseph never disobeyed God anymore any, at any time. Joseph heard the voice of God and he knew where God was speaking. When the error died, the angel came to him again and said, move. Those who are after Jesus are all dead. We don't know how many years it took, but the Bible says Joseph was following the voice of God. As the year is about to end, I want to let you know tonight that homes that we fulfill the purpose of God must have a spiritual headship, must have a spiritual covering for spiritual direction and spiritual instructions. And many a time, spiritual instructions bring physical deliverance. Spiritual instruction brings physical liberation. Spiritual adherence to spiritual instruction puts you ahead of your enemies. Hallelujah to the glory of God. Men that listen to God, the Bible speaks of the sons of Issachar that have understanding of the time of what God will have Israel do. Joseph was a man. His ear was attuned to God. His heart was attuned to God. Why? Because a special project was handed over to him. And what was that project? To be the earthly father of Jesus, who we are celebrating his birth on Christmas Day. Hallelujah to the glory of God. Now, we want to let you know tonight that even when at the time, if you follow me to the book of Luke, if we go to the book of Luke, as I begin to round up tonight, Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to verse 41 to 53. When you go to Luke chapter 2, verse 41, the Bible says in that particular episode, Jesus Christ followed his parents to go to Jerusalem for for the feast of the Passover every year. The Bible says when they were coming back, Jesus Christ stayed back. And so they didn't see Jesus again. Luke chapter 2 verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. 
But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it took three days for them to locate Jesus. The lesson I want to bring out here is that no man is perfect. But men must aspire for perfection in parenting, in asserting responsibility to be the point man in your family. The Bible says in this particular episode, Christ and Mary with Jesus and his family, they went for the feast of the Passover. Remember the Bible says, Joseph was a just man and upright man. He was a man that followed the law diligently. And so, but when Christ stayed back and they looked for him, they didn't see him. One, Joseph did not blame Mary and say, Mary, I know you were existing. You didn't put eye on Jesus. No, the Bible says they accepted the mistake as a joint. They took joint ownership of the responsibility. They took joint responsibility for baby Jesus delaying in Jerusalem. The Bible says they didn't, they didn't, there was no blame game. There was no buck passing. They faced the consequences together until the conflict was resolved. I can tell you it was a time of conflict. There's no home without conflict. But how you resolve your conflict shows the openness of the, you to the dealings of the Holy Spirit. Mary could have stayed by and said, you can look for your son. And Joseph would say, is it your son? Is it my son? Not be your son, the Holy Ghost. Go and look for your son. No. They went back together. They weathered the storm together. Men out there, how many of us weathered the storm with our wives? Your child may have gone into drug addiction. Your, drug, your child may have gone into pornography. Your child may have gone into all sorts of vices. And you say, yes, you, you blame your wife, you blame, or your wife blame the husband. You cannot achieve solution in that mind. You need to face it together, support each other, and face the storm. And I tell you, one shall chase a thousand, two, ten thousand. And in the New Testament, you are destined to win battles of life, no matter the number. Hallelujah to the glory of God. So I begin to conclude the number says, rise for your family. Joseph did, even when there was a potential conflict, a John hand with his wife. And the Bible says, when they went a day journey without Jesus, they spent three days looking for Jesus. And what is the message there? Keep close eye on what you have. Many homes are being lost today because men are preoccupied with activities and they are losing focus on what God has handed over to them. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration for understanding. God wants you to know this and, and know peace. Even though you must have experienced slackness before now, I'm telling you by the Spirit of God. Retrace your step, assume your spiritual leadership, and I tell you, your family, your family will fulfill the mandate that God has destined them to be. God is looking for men who will be his point men in homes to establish and reestablish his counsel upon the earth. Be that man. Be that man. Be that man. Merry Christmas and God bless you. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, men are looking and say, I want to be a point man. Grant their heart desire. Let there be restoration of their spiritual man to over families. That our homes be saved from the attack of the wicked one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. It's another time to experience God. Next Saturday is the last Saturday of the year. We shall be having family thanksgiving. Prepare your heart to receive Thanksgiving teaching on family system. God bless you. Shalom. Merry Christmas once again. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's episode on The Word with Dr. Levin, presented by Global Pillar Ministry. Join us every Saturday for the undiluted teachings of The Word. You can watch previous and current episodes on our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram channels. You can access the channel using the handle The Word with Levin. Please turn on notifications to join us every Saturday by 9 p.m. Listen to our audio messages on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts by simply searching for The Word with Levin. For inquiries, please call 0903 470 
0607 or send an email to info at globalpillarministry.org or visit our website on www.globalpillarministry.org To support the Global Pillar Ministry, please send donations to GT Bank PLC account number 074-579-5640 God bless you. See you next week.